you up nicely in these cold times. The blood orange is up front and cuts through the bitterness of the IPA perfectly. And this perfect beer was brought to us by these perfect peeps. First up, we have Adam in Queensland, Australia. And a big shout out to Dan in Perth in Western Australia. Next up, we have Kylie in Northcote, Australia. Well, cheers, mates. And a big We Like Your Jib to Beth in Omaha, Nebraska. Next up, we have a shout from Gramps to Harry's awesome mom in Pflugerville. And last but not least, we have Jose from the cold, dark, and foggy Netherlands. So thanks, everybody, for going to TrueCrimeGarage.com and helping out with this week's beer fund. And make sure you follow us on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff at True Crime Garage. And that is enough of the business. All right, Captain, remind me to thank you later. Everybody gather around, grab a chair, grab a beer. Let's talk some true crime. this fascinating case well captain i know that we've talked a little bit about the photos that would have been found later on the digital camera that was found inside the backpack Mm -hmm. and we've talked about this a little bit but we've not gone into great detail now i do want to throw something out there because most of the reports that i could find in in you know i referenced the daily beast yesterday they have really the most comprehensive report on this case. There are a lot of very, what I'm guessing are thorough and detailed accounts of, of these reports online, but they, a lot of those are Dutch, you know, so it makes it tough for us garage people Mm -hmm. to figure out and how to read those. So we're not fluent in the Dutch. Yeah. So we went with the daily beast for, um, I did anyway for most of my research the one thing that I call into question regarding the Daily Beast that was a little confusing to me is those reports, as well as others that I found, state that the digital timestamp on the camera, the, on the memory, it was working. Okay. Okay. But where I call that into question is we have a situation where the early photos, and this will make more sense if you're unclear about this case, uh, it'll make more sense as we get into it, but the early photos... Those, when we say, hey, what time did they get to the summit? What time did they get to the top, the, the mirror door? Uh, the guess is that it's around 1 p.m., and that's based off of the position of the sun in there, the location, the known location of the women. Mm-hmm. When we look at the later photos, we get more we get more detailed information with these. And what I mean by that is time stamps. Right. I don't understand why some of the same reports reference two different things, the position of the sun with the early photos and then later the timestamps with another. So I very confusing there. And I, I'm not, I don't mean to confuse anyone, but I want to throw that out there because should we find ourselves in a situation where people are calling into question the information, I just want to be clear on how it was presented and what was found out there. So I found statements stating that the camera's memory, it was preserved and that the digital timestamp worked. So mm-hmm. according to that, investigators could tell exactly what photo was taken and when, right? So this, of course, assuming that the timestamp is correct, we've done so many cases where <laughs> we're talking about surveillance footage and it's off an hour. Right. Um, the, f- the camera itself was not equipped with GPS capabilities. As we said yesterday, it was retrieved intact, and there were 100-plus photos on it that were still available to investigators. Now, approximately 12 photos, these were taken on the day that the women were hiking, that they hiked the Pinista up the way to the, the to the crest right. during the day on April 1st. Well, like we said, there were some selfies, and there was a couple pictures of each other taking pictures uh, of their friend. The last image from that day is of Chris standing on a rock looking as though she's about to traverse a small stream. Mm -hmm. It is sunny. She does not appear to be in distress. 
Although now we know that the women were not heading in the direction that they should have been. Right. They're we, in the opposite direction. We don't know exactly what time this photo was taken, but we do know that both women tried to call uh, 112 after 4 p.m. that day. So what happened in those roughly three hours between the crest of the divide and the emergency calls? Or in the even smaller window between the last photo of Chris and the calls. Well, what we do know is that it gets dark very early here, so it's going to get dark around 4 p.m. Well, it, it should start getting darker in the jungle around that time. The sunset would have been 6.40 p.m. Okay. on that day. So then we have seven days later. This is what I was referencing earlier, where we have the earlier photos, and then we have the later photos. We have... Roughly 12 pictures that are taken of the two women on the day that they're hiking on April 1st. Right. It's not until seven days later that another photo was taken. And incredibly, there were 90 plus photos taken on the camera in the middle of the night on April 8th, a week after the women went missing. And most of those pictures don't make sense to either you or I. And that's, w <laughs> and that's why... A lot of people speculate that they're using the camera's flash as a way to see where they're going. Yeah, right. And and I apologize for laughing when you were, were talking there, Captain, but in all honesty, you know, most of the photos, I say, I think all of them don't make sense to me. Right. And I think because they don't make sense to me that I find it eerie and I find it extremely creepy. That, that they don't make any sense. And like you said, it could be something as simple as somebody using the flash of the camera to try to see in the middle of the night. Maybe right. they're making their way on a trail. Maybe they're hearing something. Yeah, and at some point you're going to see there's a couple pictures of the back of one of the girl's heads. And I would argue it's not a picture to show the, the damage, really. They, it could have been... Well, uh, I think something's wrong with my head. I think I hit my head. And and the friend saying, okay, well, let me uh, use the flash to see if I can see anything. Right. Right. Also, you could then look back at the camera to to view the pictures. So to see, okay, well, let me take a picture of it. Let me see what's wrong with your head. But again, you can't tell. Is that a person taking a picture of the back of their head? Is she taking a picture of the back of her head herself or is her friend taking the picture of the back of her head? Okay. Well, let's give a good, uh, good representation of these photos. So the, the people that have never seen any of these can get an idea of what we're talking about here. So seven days later, 90 plus photos taken on the camera in the middle of the night, April 8th, right? All of these photos appear to have been taken in the pitch dark of night most of them only seconds apart using the flash and they were taken over a two plus hour period. The last one was taken at 3:22 AM. Furthermore, all the photos appear to have been taken from approximately the same spot. You know, the photographer was not moving around more than a few meters. Right. So what do these pictures show when, when viewed as a whole, the daily beast says the photos seem to have some kind of pattern. Although they are all eerie and overexposed due to the flash in the, in the blackness. All of the photos were taken in a steep jungle environment. A dozen or more of these photos are of a long range. They're like hard to make out images. And we see some close up well lit images as well. Now the close up well lit images are as follows. There's a, a single photo of a bloody temple area. Okay. This is other people's words, not, not the colonel's words here. A single photo of a blood, bloody temple area on what appears to be Chris's head. This is based off of the hair color. Right. Now, the scary thing about this photo is it's not known whether she was alive when this photo was taken. It doesn't show us enough stuff for us to formulate a whole opinion and theory off of what's seen or what's available in that photo. Mm -hmm. Then another photo would show a crude, possibly a crude direction marker made out of tiny sticks and little pieces of, of orange plastic. Now this, many have speculated about what 
this is pieces of. Some think it to be pieces from a plastic bag or even gum wrappers laid out on a large flat topped uh, boulder. In the background of this picture behind the boulder, some believe that an enhanced version shows that the markers might be pointing toward a, in a straight line across the terrain to a possible monkey bridge. Remember we talked about those monkey bridges yesterday, a boulder. Another one shows a boulder or other rock surface type thing, uh, with what appears to be paper or toilet tissue. Some have speculated that, that this might be a possible attempt to spell something. Mm -hmm. And, Others point out that there is a rusty mirror in the center of the letters to who knows what this is for. Could this be for to reflect the flash of the light? Um, look, you, you talked about the possibility of using the flash to be able to see uh, along a trail or maybe to see something in the jungle for right. whatever reason. Others have speculated that could they have been using one or the, one or two of the women using the flash to signal something, signal a helicopter searching for them or to signal people searching in the jungle for them. Yeah, I mean, that's very possible. Some of the shots appear to be looking downward into a ravine and in one of them in particular, looking down into maybe a canyon below. In this particular photo, there is a blurry object on the ground, and this is in the background. And some believe, some have stated that they think that that's a body, the blurry object there. Mm. The tricky thing here, Captain, is on the, we know from weather reports that there were several heavy rains in the middle of the night on the 8th. So given that time period, we know these were taken in the middle of the night. Could the raindrops have made it difficult for the camera to pick up images at a distance? You know, things that maybe they could see with whoever's shooting these photos that they could see with their eyes that the camera just simply isn't picking up for some reason. Yeah, or were they hearing things and trying to use the light to see what they're hearing? Or the light to scare something off if it's an animal, like True. one of those monkeys or... Mm -hmm. Now, so... What's up with these pictures is what everybody is talking about. The thing I want to know is why would someone go for seven days between photographs and then take a series of photos in the middle of the night using the flash all from the same spot? Well, maybe they're using other sources to light their way, mm -hmm. such as their phones or. But we have the we have the log of the information of their phones. They're not being turned on. They're being shut off. Mm hmm. Or their watch, or you know, I'm just saying, I, I I don't know. I mean, it's the whole thing is confusing. Yes, yes, it's it's very confusing. That some people have wondered if if this was an attempt to hint at their location. You know, like things are super dire at this point. They've been missing for a week. Right. Take some photos of where we last were or where I last was, because there might only be one of them left at this point, right. depending on what has happened. Is this an attempt for someone to mark their location or is it an attempt to mark the location where Chris uh, died or was incapacitated? And I say Chris, because we have that picture, possible picture of the bloody temple. Right. Uh, I also wonder I'm assuming this camera has the capability of also taking video. So that's where then I wonder if you're trying to leave answers for when somebody finds your belongings, why don't you just toss on the video camera and say, Hey, this is where I'm at. This is what happened. I mean, you see that in what's that movie? 127 hours. He does the same thing, puts his camera on him and basically says goodbye. And right. So and, why wasn't that done if that was the intent? Right. I don't know if it was able to take video. Most most cameras nowadays are. Um, so I would assume that it was. Right. And that feature, for whatever reason, if it was available, was not not used. The other thing, too, is their, we do know their phones. You know, you and I are more familiar with their phones than this particular camera. We know their phones would have had the ability to film a video and that obviously was not done with the 
the phones. Right. And again, uh, though, uh, it could be no power to the phones. Right. Obviously, too, though, we see an effort to conserve the battery of the phone. And yeah. everybody knows shooting a video with your phone will drain the battery probably faster than just about anything else. Yeah. But then it also makes you just wonder, did they come upon somebody or were they being guided by somebody and once they're dead are they messing with their stuff and messing with the camera or were they dead and somebody came upon them right and found their belongings afterwards and decide to power up the phone on the 11th take some pictures on the 8th right the 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 strange thing to me though is we see a similar behavior with both with all three of these items, right? We have the phones that are used for days from the up until the 6th and then then not used again until the 11th. And then with the camera, we have the camera being used on the 1st and then not used again until the 8th. It just right. seems like a strange pattern of mm -hmm. behavior, whether it's done intentionally done by one of the women or both or someone else. Right. It's it's done by somebody. We can we can agree with that. There may be a a glitch. I will go with a glitch more likely on the phone. Mm -hmm. These photos were taken by somebody. Right. Okay. So uh, there was a glitch that took uh, ninety pictures. Well, I, and I say you know, and I know it sounds silly to say there was no glitch that took ninety pictures, but furthermore on that is we have this aspect because mm -hmm. I I had I did read somebody speculate that like okay let's say the one of the girls had the, one of the women had the phone, I'm not the phone, the camera on her person and passed away, expired from, from any number of reasons. All right. Mm -hmm. Could, could an animal have come up and been messing with the body and accidentally bumped the phone or causing, you know, bumped, right, but sorry, that, I keep saying phone when right, I need but, to say camera. Right, but at that point, you're getting into crazy speculation because what you're getting into is that uh, one of the individuals passed away, the camera was on her, an animal comes up, accidentally hits these photos that are taken at all different angles, so that not only does the, the animal take the pictures, but it moves the camera in 90 different ways, and uh, then magically the camera gets back into the book bag. Right. That's, right. I mean, that's just too much speculation. N not too much speculation. It's fucking impossible. Well, <laughs> I mean, right sorry there. to put it. I can't put it any more politely. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, somebody's, well, somebody's got the dirty mouth. I'm not going to lie to you. I was actually pissed off that I, that I read someone's thoughts mm. about that happening that way. Like, Whatever. So anyway, and what here's what we do know, and this mm -hmm. is real stuff. So the investigators, with the help of guides, they're like they were actually able to pinpoint exactly where some of these mysterious photos were taken. Right. Or, it, at least the ones that show the markers on the rock. The, it, we're mm -hmm. calling those directional markers. Yeah. If in fact that's what they are. I actually think uh, law enforcement called those the emergency markers. Okay. So and. And they basically were able to find the exact location, the exact rock where that photo was taken. So this site is about three miles straight downhill from Boca Tay, the town where they were going to stay. Mm -hmm. This is on the western bank of a tributary that feeds into that big river there. So this is about 12 hours by foot from the trail that they were on. Now, the shorts were supposedly found in the river right near where these photos were taken mm -hmm. or they, you know, folded up neatly placed beside the river there. Um, and a few kilometers upstream from where the backpack washed up or was placed. Right. It is also about two kilometers upstream from where the first of the body parts was found. So nearby are several abandoned Nobi huts that the women might have spotted and possibly could have even used as makeshift shelters before they met their fates. Right. So, and from this spot, had they been able to continue along the river, following the trail through the jungle, they would have got to the Nobi village before too long. So what this, what, what this means is if in fact, one of the women was taking these pictures or both of them, 
And if one or both of them made it to where their belongings made it to, they did possibly have shelter and they weren't very far away from other people. Right. The, the big question in this whole deal, Captain, is really, I think we're left with two very simple explanations as to what happened. We either have an accident that, you know, that these women died and expired because of an accident, or they met with foul play somehow. Support for today's show comes from Simply Safe. If you've been thinking about getting a Simply Safe home security system, but you've been waiting for the holidays when all the tech deals come out, you made a smart move. Because right now, I can get you a great deal on Simply Safe. If you go to simplysafe.com slash garage, you'll get 25% off any new system. That's an amazing deal. They rarely do anything like this, but they're doing it just for us. Simply Safe is great protection for your home and family. They don't make you sign a contract, and there's no hidden fees. They're also getting great reviews. CNT, PC Mag, and Wirecutter all say Simply Safe is the best security system there is. So if you're looking for a security system and you want a great deal, go to simplysafe.com/garage to save 25%. Make sure you use that unique URL because it really helps the show. That's simplysafe.com slash garage, simplysafe.com slash garage. And hurry, this deal ends November 26. From the makers of NutriBullet Blenders comes the next big thing in smoothie making, the NutriBullet Balance. NutriBullet Balance isn't like any other blender ever created. This first of its kind Bluetooth-enabled smart nutrition system makes perfectly balanced smoothies every time because balanced meals are the key to a healthy, balanced life. With the Balance's patented technology, you can say goodbye to recipe books, measuring cups, and just hoping that you get it right. NutriBullet Balance connects to an app. When you're building a smoothie, the built-in smart sensor scale sends nutritional information for every ingredient as they are added. So you can see the calories, fat, carbs, protein, and more as they're added into every smoothie. It's something no other blender in the world can do. The NutriBullet Balance app also has hundreds of recipes created by top nutritionalists that work with any wellness plan. Head to NutriBulletBalance.com slash garage for a special offer. That's NutriBulletBalance.com slash garage. NutriBullet, balance your nutrition, balance your life. And a one-night special TV event, Oxygen Brains to Life, Payne Lindsay's hit true crime podcast, Up and Vanished. In 2016, Payne took a deep dive into the disappearance of Tara Grinstead, a young teacher who went missing 13 years ago. Payne has dedicated himself to Tara's case every day, slowly unlocking the secrets her small town couldn't shake. Tara was last seen on October 21st, 2005 in Osceola, Georgia. She was heading home from a barbecue and suddenly went missing. Tara's story remained a mystery for over a decade. Then Payne stepped in. His search for the truth got the town talking, and the Up and Vanish podcast became a national phenomenon, reaching over 240 million people. But the story doesn't end there. Payne is still at work, determined to find answers. Don't miss Up and Vanish, a one-night special TV event based on the hit podcast. Sunday, November 18th at 7 on Oxygen, the new network for crime. Cheers, mates. Cheers, Captain. Let's get into the possibilities here. Mm -hmm. Accident or foul play? Because let's start with accident. Well, I want to give a shout out real quick. A big cheers to all the veterans that serve and protect us. Yes. I just want to give a little cheers as I'm drinking. And thoughts and prayers with everybody in California. Hang yes. in there. Um, so if everyone analyzing the photos left on the Canon camera. If they are correct from what I found, it seems that for whatever reason, they all believe that the two women decided to deviate from the trail that they were traveling on that day and proceeded down the other side of the divide. Right. It makes you wonder when they're looking this stuff up online, because we know that they did right. Mm -hmm. That did they see something where they go, Oh, well we can go past 
for example, I was in Hawaii once and there was a, a trail called the Road to Hana. And the whole thing was once you got to Hana that you would turn around. Right. But there was also a couple miles of an unfinished road that you could take and loop back around. And I decided to take the unpaved, un, you know, finished road. There you go. So is there something that they saw that was like, well, once you get to the summit point, you can go a little bit further to see whatever. Right. And that maybe it wasn't that they were going to, that they willy nilly got lost, but they just also didn't understand that the darkness was going to be falling on them around four o'clock in the jungle. So did they get a little bit too far? For, did they get a little too far out and then decide, oh, we made a mistake? Well, I, so what most people suggest is that, okay, we have the first 112 call attempt was shortly after 4.30 p.m. on that day. Still daylight at this time. But it's probably pretty dark in the jungle then. Well, sunsets at 6.40 p.m. on, on April 1st. So whatever, you know, take that information for what it is. We're not in the jungle broadcasting here today. No. So many people believe that this call was likely placed because one of the women had been hurt in some kind of accident. That's what I have seen online. That's what the Reddit people seem to think Mm -hmm. that an accident occurred around this time. And that's why the first one, one, two call attempt was made at four 30 PM. Perhaps a fall, some kind of twisted ankle. I mean, any number of injuries. You, Could you have broke her ankle. Imagination, yes. Yeah. So the problem I have with this thought and theory, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that it's unlikely. But what I'm saying is I think that later evidence might prove or, or at least suggest that it's more likely this was not the situation. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is their belongings, their remains, they're found a good distance from this location. So let's say that they traveled, um, walking distance three hours, roughly by the time they make that first attempt to one, one, two. Well, the walking distance, they're found like 12 hours from where we know they were happy and alive. Right. So, that's another nine hours walking distance. Right. And if you snapped your ankle, then you might not be making it that far. Yes. I think what might be more likely at 4.30 p.m. is that maybe they realized they had become lost. Right. And I think that there's a good chance that maybe they didn't realize that they were lost until like three hours into the hike back. Mm-hmm. Because... Look, and like I said earlier, I'm not I'm not an experienced hiker. I'm not a well-experienced hiker, but I do know this. I've been out plenty of times where I'm hiking, I'm camping, I'm out in the wilderness, and I'm walking on trails. A lot of the stuff looks the same. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and if you didn't take really good mental note of things on your way up, you may have simply just gone on the wrong trail thinking you were just returning down on the same trail that you had come up. Maybe you got turned around while you were up at the top there. Right. You started down the wrong way. I think, haven't all of us been there where we're traveling down the trail and we go, it might be a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour into it, and you're going, I'm starting to get in the feeling like I haven't, like maybe I went the wrong way. Yes. But what do we do? Most of us just continue on going because we're like, eh, I, I'm probably wrong. Well, I haven't hiked trails like this, but I've I've done a lot of hiking and like parks and stuff. And like you said, some of the trails you go somewhere and then you come back, but most of them there's some kind of loop around. Even if you get to the end and it's just a circle that loops you back to the path you were just on, that lets you know, hey, oh well, shit, this one didn't loop around. I have to go back the way I came. But some of the trails they just loop back around. Mm-hmm. So there's there's been times that I've been on a trail that we did two or three loops, and I'm like, man, this trail's long. And they're like, what are you talking about? We finished the trail three times. Right. And I'm like, oh, but that's also, you know, you probably shouldn't drink a lot of beers before you go hiking. But so now you're in this area that has way more trees and they're in the jungle, man. Right. That's I mean, that's the most simple way to put it. Yeah. And I just again, again, is it that 
wrong to think that maybe there was some reason that they were going to go a little further than what the initial hike is supposed to be. And they just got lost. And this is just a, it was a mistake and it's a very tragic way to, to die. But you know, there's really no evidence of a crime here so far. Right. So far. And the thing is though, too, you know, this is, these are not hallways, you know, we're not talking about hallways. It's not like a situation where you're, you're walking for an hour, hour and a half, two hours even. And you go, shoot, I think I've gone the wrong way. I'll just turn around and, and go back. Right. You know, we're talking about who knows the number of trails that are going on this other side here. And what I mean by that is how many times, even if I figured out finally that I've gone the wrong direction, Mm -hmm. how many times do I come to a fork in the road, a fork in the path on that trail, trying to return, get back to the, the correct trail and have to choose a direction. Did I go left here? Did I go right here? You know what I mean? It's, it's a mind game. Mm -hmm. And I think what, what personally may have happened here is that we have a situation I think they've called in and they realize that they're lost. I don't think no, they called in with with an injury at 4.30 p.m. on that first day. I agree, but based on the fact that they end up 12, um, 12 hours away right, from from where that call took place. So, And also, there's, there's so many times where experienced hikers have gone missing, and these girls, you know, by all accounts, are not experienced hikers. Well, and there's no markers indicating that they are going the right way or what direction they should take. Right. So that are at a huge disadvantage no matter what in an area that they're not familiar with. So let's say that the women did become lost at some point. And once they, once they got lost, it's kind of easy to understand how they could have quickly have gotten into trouble. The tropical cloud forest where the women, uh, where we believe the women were, this is a wild area. This is venomous snakes. Mm -hmm. This is insects, poisonous plants. There's, uncountable hazards out there. Right. And also remember that the footing in these little used trails is very rocky and unstable. And the trails can instantly become rushing waterways with these tropical storms that can come in at a a moment's notice. Right. But even worse, the region is mountainous and uneven with ravines and crevices and cliffs. And sometimes these things are hidden in the jungle. Now there is a predominant theory out there that at least one of the women fell to her death. So under my thought, this would be some point after they became lost in Mm -hmm. the jungle, that one of the women fell to her death or was severely injured during this fall, possibly off of a monkey bridge. So interestingly, one of the photos taken in the dark on April 8th, this, um, the one with what investigators believe is a makeshift directional markers, made up of twigs and plastic pieces right? seems to show one of these bridges. Remember we referenced that earlier in the background and some have wondered was Lizanne trying to indicate that Chris possibly fell off of a monkey bridge mm-hmm. now. Okay. So I probably should have got into this a long time ago to, to clarify what a monkey bridge is. Um, for the most part, you can kind of picture uh, Indiana Jones and the temple of doom and, right. and use your imagination a little bit, but basically a, a monkey bridge is a rope or a piece of cable that is used to cross gorges rivers or, you know, any number of obstacles. Um, there is one strand of rope or cable for walking on and two strands up above on either side for people to hold on to while they're carefully attempting to rock walk across. Mm hmm. So all three of these ropes or cables will be anchored on either side of the obstacle that you're trying to traverse. So what makes this theory popular is that the women's remains and backpack were found near the river downstream from an actual monkey bridge near which the night photos were taken and the shorts were believed to have been found. The thinking is that Chris Parrish somehow on the eastern side of the river where her shorts may have been found. And Lizanne attempted to go on from there, but mind you, at this point, she would have been weakened by a week or more of no food. And who knows how much water she's consumed during this week. Right. So 
no food, little to no water. Was she not able to navigate the multiple monkey bridges and possibly fell, breaking her foot, which would immobilize her, you know, leaving her stranded in one of the gorges along the river system? The other thing, too, that might suggest this, we do know that the bones of Lee Zan's foot were broken inside of the boot because that's the way they were found later. Right. Other things that point to an accident incapacitating at least one of the women include the photo of the head injury on Chris's temple. Again, we don't know if she was mobile or even alive when the photo was taken, but these kind of situations that we've just discussed, they're not uncommon. You know, for people traveling abroad to exotic, dangerous places, Mm -hmm. they're not familiar with, they go out into the woods, they go out on an adventure and they become injured at some point. Every day that you're out there, every hour that you're out there, that's why they have a certain path that you go, Hey, go up to this point and come back. And that's still, you know, six hours of, you know, tracking back and forth. And I'm sure that people still get injured doing that. But when you're out there for so many days and so many hours and so many miles of walking, it's more likely that these things are going to happen. Now, there are some people that would would say, Nick, you're wrong, um, that that's not likely. And they point to, this is a well-known fact, that there have been other people, other tourists that have gotten lost on that exact trail or the surrounding trails Mm -hmm. and then later been located by guides or uh, searchers using dogs. Right. Okay. So this, but this case has been suggested, was suggested to me a lot. And then once I started diving into it right away, it's, it's very creepy there with the phone log, with the photos, there's a lot of stuff to take a look at and ponder. I'm, I'm still wondering where, where there's evidence of a crime because I don't see it yet. Well, okay. So we, before Uh, and I'm not saying that you see it either. I'm just saying that people have point to the fact that this could be a crime. Well, no, you're right. I mean, it's often discussed in areas that, in forums that you would discuss true crime. Right. Okay. And I think it's the fact of not knowing. It's, we don't know for sure what has happened. Uh, More to the thought of an accident occurred. We do have survival specialists commenting on this specific case. And they've referenced cases that they've studied in the past citing that people in these situations can often survive for a week or maybe even 10 days, but almost never survive two weeks. Right. And if one or both of them were injured, then obviously that would com- compound things significantly. Right. There was a wilderness expert for the daily beast that concluded that this was very likely a tragic accident. We also have the local public prosecutor who ruled that it was an accident. And she emphasized Mm -hmm. that there is no indication of any trauma from cutting, stabbing, or violent dismemberment on the bones that were found. I have a big problem with that statement. While that statement is very true, I question the evidence because we discussed these are bone fragments. Right. How broke and some of them are broken bone fragments. Okay. So, so let's, before we go down any crazy roads off of the accident thing, let's get into the thought of foul play because Mm -hmm. obviously bizarre circumstances in this case, of course, have given rise to the speculation about what could have happened to Chris and Lee Zan. So although quite a bit of evidence points to a tragic accidental death, Mm -hmm. there are plenty of people who are not willing to chalk up the strange circumstances of this case to the women just getting lost. So conspiracy theories are they're out there, right? So the deaths of Chris and Lee Zan have been blamed on cannibals, cartel hitmen, drug mules, organ traffickers, serial killer, straight up conventional kidnapping or rape. Right. Um, you know, there's no really shortage of foul play theories out there. Perhaps the theories go, they did not head down the other side of the trail or the divide of their own accord. If they came across someone dangerous on their trek, perhaps that person or persons forced Chris and Lizanne to walk towards 
the Bocas del Toro. Right. Instead which, of back to the town. Which I'd agree with other than the fact that we have we still have pictures after that point. Right. As of them having like a good time. What's that? Well, it looks like they're still having pictures of them traveling and having a good time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was thinking about the pictures <laughs> on April 8th. Um, no, there is at least one picture that shows them to believe to be on the other side of the divide. And just as you said, you know, you, you can only view one of the women in the picture, but she doesn't seem to be stressed. She doesn't seem to be, right. you know, uh, she's not being held hostage because she's the only one in the picture. It's weird that we don't have more eyewitnesses that saw him on the trail because I'd really like to know were they being guided by somebody because somebody that's guiding them further than they're supposed to go. And then, oh, no, no, we'll just keep going past here. Well, this is a shortcut. This is the right way. Right. Or, uh, yeah, I'll show you a shortcut. Or just a little bit further this way, there's something really cool you need to see, and that's when I'm going to, you know, attack you. I'm not going to tell you that while we're going down the trail. And so, of course, they get past that point. They're still taking pictures. But they did take quite a few pictures. You'd think that maybe there would be some evidence that there'd be somebody else with them. Well, okay. So th the thought on that is that exact theory might explain why there were no marks on trees, arrows scratched on rocks or trails mm -hmm. of fabric or any kind of other clues left behind by the women. You know, sometimes you see these kind of things done by people that are lost. Right. And we don't see that here. Well, po you possibly see that in the little, what they're calling the emergency markings. You but, know. but that would be seven days later. Right, correct. My thought here is, let's say they are alone. Or, you know, you bring up the interesting thought, if they're being led away there and they think they're going in the right direction, they're being told they're going in the right direction, they wouldn't leave any markers. You know, so that would explain that. Or do you have a situation where they're lost and they don't realize that they're lost? and they're moving further and further from their point. Mm -hmm. The other thing that might point towards possible foul play is that we have, we do know that calls were attempted, you know, for a few days after right. April 1st, and they stopped on the eventually, but we do know at least someone is using the phone there, right. you know, and eventually they're not using the pen anymore. You know, was this someone that didn't know the, the women and didn't know the pen? Right. Another factor that gives rise to theories of foul play are the very, you know, the very little that was found of the women's remains. Right. And the state of those remains. For one thing, where are the larger body parts? Yeah. To I put think it you crudely, sorry. Chalk a lot of that up to the elements plus the animals. I would agree with that, but I did find some people familiar with the area that point out that when cows are killed by poisonous snakes in this area mm -hmm. or drown in floods in the area that the entire carcasses are, are often found or actually mm. every, according to these people are always found and right. found intact. Um, and then we do have a situation where the body of a little girl who drowned in the river was found also intact. This was after a week. Um, we should point out that Chris and Lizanne were gone for months before, you know, their remains were found, right. but their remains are found in little bits and pieces. Right now, experts in various sources have indicated that decomposition would be very slow in the cloud forest environment because it's shady, damp and cool and deterioration is delayed. So if this in fact is true, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because so little is found of these poor women. Yeah. And I, I, I definitely think that piece of evidence makes me question this. Right. You know, was it an accident or was this foul play? The other thing is the book bag, the, just the condition it was found in what was found in it. It just, uh, that really gets me. Now I don't want to discredit the power of insects and in the, you will never hear another show ever say that exact sentence. I don't want to discredit the power of insects, man, because I'm telling you, I, you if you watch Nat Geo channel enough, they'll show those little like, um, you know, it's like it's the images that they speed up with the, a camera that's recording 
a whole group of ants Mm -hmm. or insects that will get on something and then over the course of a day or a week devour it to the point where it will fall apart. Right. Um, so I'm not, I'm not saying that just because of what these experts say that the deterioration would have been slow. I think what they're, they're speaking in generalities there, who knows what space, you know, the exact space that these bodies were left in, be it from an accident or from an attack. Right now, what we do know is the area that it's believed that, uh, they were last alive given the photographs. In these areas, there's no like large cats or crocodiles or big predators Mm -hmm. in, in this particular area. And that might be why the, the people from the tribe at one time were living in this spot. Yeah. And, and I also, I still like, I can't go over, like I said, the, the way the book bags found, but also the shorts is very interesting if they were truly folded. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go into the book bag first, then we'll get to the shorts because I was thinking the same thing. And a lot of people point out that, that, okay. Cause there's flash flooding in this area very regularly. So if I expire and I'm anywhere near the river, if I die from an accident or just, you know, succumbing to the elements at some point, there could be a flash flood that would then wash me into the river and wash me down the river. Right. Right. This could account for my body being tore up in the process over the course of months or however long, depending on what's going on with the added, you know, we have animals, we have, now we have the river, we have all kinds of things going on. However, like you said, the backpack is found very near the river. So if that backpack is with me up until the point of I pass away, we got to believe that the backpack and me took a similar trip down the river. The backpack, it's a cheap, you know, it's a cheap backpack mm-hmm. that would have likely fallen apart in a rushing river. And if you're going to say that that's what happened to my body, but it didn't happen to the backpack, I have a bit of an issue with that. Right. I, I find it extremely strange that not only is the backpack found in good condition, it's found in very likely very good condition. And now we have little pieces and parts of, of bodies here. Now, you're touching on something interesting too, is the shorts. Well, we have a discrepancy on how the shorts were actually found. If they were found in the river. Okay. That, that points to, uh, to me, I guess more likely an accident. Right. If they're folded up and placed neatly somewhere near the river. Okay. What does that leave us with captain? Two options here. We got the option of some killer, took these shorts and folded them up and placed them neatly near the river or the person wearing the shorts. One of the women took them off, folded them up and placed them near the river. But right. I, I don't see a woman stranded in the jungle, taking off her shorts and going pantless, you know, going without her shorts in the jungle, trying to stay alive. I, I mean, I guess unless it was something to wash up in the river, I, I don't know. I can't make, it's much like the pictures. And much like the activity on the cell phones, it's hard to make sense out of really any of this. Well, that's what's so frustrating. I mean, the things that make this case so interesting are these photos, the things that make, you know, uh, the call log, these items that makes the case so interesting. And then on the flip side of things, I felt bad because the family having these call logs to look over and these photos to look over. It's like this, it it feels like it's a puzzle that you can put together and make sense of it, but I don't know if you can. Right. Now, one thing we've not talked about is photo 509. Yeah, 509. One thing I want to get into something before we get to that real quick is, is a thought that we have, this is something you see a lot when people are stranded and they know They've lost all hope that they're not going to be found. They're not going to be rescued. They're not going to be saved. They often will leave some kind of note message, uh, recording Mm -hmm. something for their loved ones, for their wives, their children, their mother, their father, their husbands, boyfriend, whomever, somebody that means a lot to them. They want to tell them something because you have the time to do it and you know 
your that the end is near. We have two women with with cell phones, with a camera, with a backpack. There's no we found no evidence that they've left anything for any of those loved ones. They didn't record any videos like you had said. Right, which also makes it lean towards foul play. And other than the bloody the possible picture of the bloody temple or the blurry object that might be a body in the background in one of the pictures, the 90 the 90 pictures that are taken in the middle of the night they're not of of the girls. They're not of the women. They're right. just we of random what they are. Yeah. stuff. There's not even there's not a, a selfie to show that I'm injured. There's not a picture of my friend who's injured or has passed away that's obvious. But what there is is a missing photo. There's the missing photo of 509. And the weird thing about that is okay, so we have on April 1st, the day of the hike, the last photo taken that's on the camera during that afternoon, it's number 508. Right. Then there is a seven-day hiatus in the photo taking. And the Canon resumes taking pictures uh, with the night shots that we discussed, the first of which is numbered 510. Right. So where is 509? Now, as the Daily Beast put it, it's it's the one picture that would fall between the existing daytime and nighttime photos and thus could give us a clue as to why Chris and Lizan kept hiking and what or who they may have encountered out there. It is not thought likely that the women would have deleted this crucial picture themselves while out on the trail. None of the other night pictures were deleted, although some of them appear to show nothing. Investigators were unable to retrieve the image from the camera's, camera's memory card, right. leading some to believe that it had been deleted on a computer. Right. So this is where it gets very interesting is they believe they can tell, you know, you take a picture with your camera. Well, you didn't like it, so you just delete it real quick, move on to the next one. That would make sense on why we don't have a 509. But when the authorities are saying, well... We think it's more likely that the camera is actually connected to a computer to delete that picture. Wow. Right. You know I mean, that's game changer. I mean, if if they have the technology to prove that, then to me, there's no question that this was foul play. Right. And you're not going to just randomly come across a computer out in the middle of the jungle. So that means the camera was in someone else's possession if in fact that 509 photo was deleted from a computer and why would someone go to all that effort to delete the photo and then return the camera with memory card to the backpack in the general walking area of where it's believed the women were last alive. Mm -hmm. Very, very strange stuff. You have to wonder, we referenced a possible glitch in the phones earlier, could it have been some kind of glitch? Right. Or could there be some damage that we don't know about water or whatever that is that even though the picture was deleted by the camera, that it made um, the data that they're reading look a different way. I'm right. just, I'm, I'm throwing out, I have no clue about that technology, but what it comes down to is I think if you can figure out how 509 was deleted, then you will get to the answer of whether it was an accident or a murder. Well, and what the hell could be on that photo, too? Could is, be the person that is responsible for them never being found. Or a bloodied victim. I mean, any number of things really pop to mind because you're talking about the photos that we see on, the, on April 1st appear to be of two young, strong, vibrant women out on a hike, having a good time out in the sunshine of a, of a, of a trip that they wanted to go on. Right. That's what we see. That's all that indicates to me is going on. And then boom, seven days later, we got pictures, random pictures in the dark that make no damn sense at all. But that's why it makes sense to me though. If they went off trail for whatever reason, and then they stumbled upon 
They're looking for help. They're called for help. They know that they're lost. And here comes somebody that goes, hey, what are you girls doing? Can I help you? And maybe it's just like after a little bit of traveling, it's like they take a picture with this individual. Ah. Uh, you know what I mean? And then something terrible goes down after that picture. And that individual is still around to delete it. Right. And like I said, you find out why that was deleted. You figure out the answer of whether or not this was an accident or a murder. It does seem like a lot of effort to go to if you're that person, but not necessarily so much so that, you know, look, if, if, if I did something like that, of course, and I know that my picture was taken by these women, I'm going to get that photo well, off of there. But well, what I mean is the effort to return it to the right, scene. Right, but here's the here's what I want to know, and, and somebody could answer this probably in the blog, truecrimegarage.com. Here's what I want to know is, you know, I have a nice camera like this. I don't know if I delete the picture after I take the picture. If I delete it from my camera, am I able to retrieve that? Because what we do know is law enforcement can't even retrieve 509. So what if this person had knowledge that said, well, if I delete it from the camera, there's still a way for them to retrieve this. But if I delete it from a computer, there's zero way for them to retrieve, uh, uh, retrieve this picture. I don't know the answers. If somebody has that answer, please go to the blog and, and let us know. Wow. You're right. I mean, you, okay. That's crowdsourcing right there because there will be somebody out there listening that somebody right now is saying, you guys are idiots. This is how it works. (laughs) And, uh, someone just, then somebody else, yeah, somebody else is screaming, (laughs) stop doing missing person cases. It's not true crime. Even though missing person cases are handled by law enforcement. So it is true crime, but I, but I do get it sometimes. Well, the prosecutor had to give their opinion as to what took place in this this particular incident. So here's the thing. You're right. Crowdsource, someone out there knows this camera very well. And I guess what you're saying, like to me, the layperson, what I'm thinking is something as simple as my phone. Okay, my phone, I take a picture. I delete the ones I don't like. But there is an extra folder on my phone that says delete this forever. You know, like Mm -hmm. we'll hold this for 30 days, 60 days or whatever for, for Nick to determine if he actually doesn't like this photo or not. Right. So yeah, that's interesting to find out. Now I did find a blog, one, one blog that I found that said that the missing photo is being held back at the request of the family. Mm. This, who knows Exactly. That's right. If that's this rumor or not. Right. And who knows who's posting that really? So uh, personally, I don't know that I can see this being true simply for the fact that we have, we have other statements by authority saying we can't retrieve that photo. Why even bother to say, you know, well, um, may, again, maybe they're just lying to protect one of these females, which if they're lying for that, I mean, at least that's a good reason to lie. Now, I do want to throw this out there before we get into our thoughts about what could have happened to these two Teristas, but, you know, most, all of the um, experts that have looked into this case, and I mean local experts, and even Dutch experts that were flown to the area that have reviewed this case, they all state that they believe the cause of death they can't do while they cannot determine the cause of death Mm -hmm. they all have pretty much come to the conclusion that this was an accident that this is an accidental death uh that the the women became lost or injured and at some point both succumbed to the elements what do you think happened here captain well i'm not even going to speculate Um, all i'm going to say is if you tell me that that a 509 photo, photo 509 was deleted from a computer. You don't have to tell me anything else because I can't, there's no logic in my brain that could explain that. So, um, well, that would have to mean that they either left the jungle or the camera left the jungle. 
Right. And if the camera left the jungle and they did not, then I'm then some something. Right. So that 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 to me, that's your answer, and that's all you need to know. And it, and if law enforcement knows for a fact that that camera left and went to a computer to have a picture deleted and they still want to come up with this bullshit that it's an accident well well they that's w- just they that, wouldn't though that's just nonsense but if it's just speculation that it was deleted from a, a computer but they pretty for sure that it was just deleted could have been deleted by accident from the um from the camera and if they knew that then definitely it's an accident see i don't think they know that you know, obviously, like you said, because it had they known that it was deleted from a computer, then then something right. terrible. Who happened. in their right mind could make statements that they're making? Something yeah. terrible happened. What what I think we have here is I think we have a situation where there's a missing photo, and reporters are saying, "Well, why would that be? Why why can't you retrieve the photo? The photo should tell us what happened to these women." Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Look, we have over 100 photos that don't tell us what happened to these women. Right. So maybe that one extra photo doesn't help us any more than the other crap photos that we've seen. Right. And what I mean by that is I I feel like they're they're pressuring and and pushing law enforcement or the investigators who, you know, I I think we should be clear. In the reports, it often says investigators. I don't know that that 100% means all the time it's actual law enforcement. Right, right, right. Okay. So... The investigators are pushed and they're saying, well, wh- how could that be, man, that you have this camera, you can retrieve all these other photos, but you can't retrieve this one? Well, that could be any number of reasons like this, that, the other thing, removed by a computer, blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, so it could be nine or ten different reasons why that that was uh, deleted and they can't retrieve it. The other thing here, though, too, is I wouldn't fully say that if somebody could prove to me that the photo was deleted by the camera, by someone using and operating the camera, mm-hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't immediately say, well, then they weren't killed. They weren't murdered. Right. Because why the hell would that photo be deleted and all the one other, you know, 100 other photos that... Right, but you can logically explain that as far as like, oh, it was an accident or they took... Right. Somebody took a selfie that they didn't like, so they deleted it. Right. No, no. So I mean, there's there's all these logical reasons, but there is no logical reason for this to um, leave the jungle, be deleted, and then come back to the jungle. There's no logical explanation other than um, somebody didn't want that picture on there bad. Well, and I think for this this is a problem uh, that you and the listeners suggested this case. It's a it's a big problem because. Of the- this the information in this case in this case itself it does keep me up at night there's so many possibilities there's so many unanswered questions yeah that, try having like uh i think i had like four bourbon and cokes and i was watching a n- nice funny movie i was watching the adam sandler thing um, mm-hmm. and and then all of a sudden i was like well let me take a look at these photos again and then four hours later i'm like i don't know what i'm looking at I'm a big fan of this is one of my guilty pleasures. I'm a big fan of the Lingerie. show Naked and Afraid where oh. they take a couple people and they dump them out in the middle of nowhere with no clothes and basically you get to bring like one item with you. Right. And that's it and that's all. And you some of these people crap out after I saw one person crap out after 8 hours like I'm done tapping out. Mine would be like 8 minutes. Be- I, I've seen some I've seen some people make it like 21 days. Yeah. And it's, you know, watching that show often, I thought, well, looking into this case, I might be able to see some indicators of survival techniques that they used. The interesting thing here is that they, if in fact they were alive and this was an accident or they got lost or both, mm-hmm. they were, these two women were smart enough to power off these phones and not use them unnecessarily. You know, only when needed, they were using these phones in an attempt to get a rescue effort out there. Right. What troubles me is the inactiveness of both the phones and the camera Yes, for so much time. And here's the thing. It doesn't necessarily mean that they were murdered. What I think might be the situation and that I think has caused a lot of confusion in this case Mm -hmm. 
I think that it's very likely that someone or some ones may have found their remains and found their belongings before they were located by people actually searching for them. Right. And it could be as simple as somebody out in the jungle comes across uh, a phone, two phones, a camera, and decides to check them out and play with them and see what they right. can do with them. And then later that person person gets a conscious or hands it over to this Nobi tribe woman. And she says, look, I've seen, because there were missing photos. Remember we, we mentioned there was a missing poster for both of these girls. Mm -hmm. So people in the area did have a general idea that somebody was missing, that two women were missing. And this woman may have said, look, I, I got to take this stuff to, to law enforcement and let them know this is what I found. Right. But, and, 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 but 30, 30 sets of fingerprints, unidentified fingerprints are on the contents of that bag. Right. But figure out what happened to photo 509. You, you'll figure out what happened to these girls. Brilliant Earth is the global leader in ethically sourced fine jewelry and the destination for creating your own custom engagement ring. From November 11th to November 15th, you'll receive a complimentary diamond bezel bracelet with the purchase of an engagement ring. To see terms for this special offer and to shop all Brilliant Earth selections, just go to BrilliantEarth.com slash garage. That's BrilliantEarth.com slash garage. Payne Lindsay's hit true crime podcast, up and Vanished comes to life in a one-night special TV event on Oxygen. Two years ago, Payne began exploring the shocking disappearance of a young teacher and former beauty queen named Tara Grinstead, who vanished over a decade earlier. Payne is still at work, searching for the truth. Don't miss Up and Vanish, a one-night special TV event, Sunday, November 18th at 7 on Oxygen. And before we wrap up this week here, Captain, we got a little 